Hi folks, Joe Baker here with the Edit Bay. Last week, we did primary color corrections. This week, color grading. So last week we made our primary color corrections. We started by denoising our underexposed footage. We adjusted for exposure and contrast so that the shot looks technically correct, you know, from a technical standpoint. If you can look at the trace over here, we can notice that our shadows are now closer to zero. Our highlights are closer to one. We lifted the midtones a little bit to increase the overall contrast of the image. So where we're at right now is we're going to be applying some color to stylize the footage. And what I like to do at this point is really think about the context of the movie and think about the message I'm trying to portray to the audience. This story revolves around this woman right here. She's our hero. And in the story, she has basically been forced into the basement of her office building along with her co-workers after they go outside and see a mysterious object in the sky. But what's happened while she's down there is the the business's security guard has gotten a little bit overzealous and has brought a gun down to the basement, fearing the worst. And they're basically afraid that he's going to do something stupid and get somebody hurt. So she's now having a heart to heart with one of her coworkers about her son, who is, she's kind of pushed to the side because she's been a very career driven woman. And in this scene, the main message that we're trying to convey to the audience is that she's getting her priorities straight, that she's changing and she's deciding, okay, I need to figure out what to do to go home and be with my son. So we're going to be using color to help convey that message. Just going to grab a colors to three way. Now our warm colors are our yellow, our orange, and our red. Orange, by the way, is where human skin tones lie. And our cool colors, we've got blue, we've got cyan, and even part of green over here. So when we talk about warming up the highlights and cooling off the shadows, all of these tend to look pretty good. But the basement that they're in is supposed to be part of the story and that it is grungy, it's very dirty, and it is supposed to be creepy looking and in stark contrast to our character. And in this scene in particular, we're trying to really show the human side of her where she's coming to realize how important her son is in her life and that she's been working too hard and that, you know, she's going to be turning over a new leaf. So the basement, because it's supposed to look creepy, I don't really want to do it any favors by coloring it a color that's generally accepted to be attractive, you know, blue. So if I move this over closer to green, I can give it now that we got this this teal color right here, I can give it a bit more of a creepy look. Green, by the way, is generally considered to be an unattractive color. That's definitely not something that we want to see in skin tones either. So we'll try to do this push-pull technique where we kind of even that out so that skin tones look natural, but we're just really cooling off those shadows and giving them that kind of green hue. The mid-tones down there a little bit. These sliders over here on the left, by the way, they will adjust saturation for, you know, their respective tone. So in the highlights, if I raise this, it's going to make her skin look really orange. And if I desaturate this, I might actually get to get that skin to a closer range. Decrease the saturation of the shadows a little bit so that doesn't come on too heavy. Again, I'll just toggle the entire thing on and off a couple of times to see how it looks. Okay, so this is still kind of considered a primary correction because we are doing a global adjustment. This tool right here is affecting the image as a whole. But what we're going to get into right now is secondary color correction or secondary color grading where we're only affecting parts of the image. So one of the things that we can take a look at is these specular highlights right here on her skin. Although all the actors were wearing makeup, the temperature in the basement was really hot. And so we ended up with actors and actresses who were sweating. So one of the things that we can do um, is apply digital makeup. And I tend to go really, really modest with this. I can toggle this on and off. I don't know if this is really apparent from the screen capture, but um, this effect by default is kind of amped up. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty noticeable. So I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. We're about 9% right there. Toggle it on and off. And just that subtle smoothing will make that skin appear slightly less reflective. Really, the good, a smart practice with this is to get it to where you can just barely notice the effect and then just kind of leave it at that. But the skin, if you're over here in Magic Bullet Looks, you can actually toggle on a skin overlay to see exactly what looks thinks, thinks of as skin. And in this case, it's really accurate. I mean, we've got a few blotches over here in the hair, but for the most part, this is really only affecting their skin. 
So again, I'll toggle that on and off. But another adjustment that's definitely going to be made and one that um, is a huge benefit to shooting log footage is that the parameters for sharpness don't get baked into the image, which is awesome. We don't want it to get baked into the image. Sharpness is something that we want to apply after the fact so that we can control the intensity. This filter right here is pop and that works just like unsharpened mask and most of Adobe's uh, products. But again, I'll toggle that on and off. The thing is, the order of um, these tools matters. I actually don't want to have a skin sharpening filter occurring before sharpness, because then what's gonna happen is the sharpening filter is gonna sharpen the already softened skin. So I actually wanna switch those and have that render afterwards. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, and then the last secondary correction that I can think of is, although we denoise this footage and the background is blurred, uh, because I was, you know, shooting at f1.4. It was pretty dark in the basement. So that is some natural bokeh right here. But we can actually, actually go to our lens filters right here. And I'm going to lay some additional, uh, sh uh, excuse me, s softening over those areas, mainly just because the footage is a little bit noisy. We were underexposed, which we can actually cover that up with this filter right here. So I'm not blurring anything over here by him. I'm going to try to get this so it doesn't look like it's covering up her hair, so it really does look like natural bokeh. And that looks pretty good. And actually bring that in a little bit. To about right there. And we can also do the same thing over here on him. There, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, last but not least, go ahead and close out of here, is I've laid a image file, an anamorphic letterbox over here on top of my video right here. I'll turn that back on. Uh, that'll just give it a look like it was shot with an anamorphic lens, which it was not. But the advantage of this is because these black bars are simply overlaid on our comp, we can actually cheat our shot composition by coming up here to motion and then adjusting the Y parameters so that we're not cutting off too much of her head. About uh, maybe a little higher, right about there, and that's about it. If you have any questions, please post a comment in the box below. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.